Hello everybody, I'm Suge and I'm taking a snow low, which is a snow solo. 2.57 a.m. Oh yes, bring me the coffee. Oh, the things we do to go winter camping with short days. I can't wait to get out there and sleep. Ho, ho, ho and woo buddy. I made mean, good time getting up here. It's about 9, I don't know, maybe 9.30 in the morning. And I came up to a spot that I'm pretty familiar with. There's snow out here. I'm not wearing snowshoes. Uh, I decided just to go mucklucks and spikes. It's not that deep. Just enough out here for it to be really pretty. So I'm doing what you do winter camping and winter backpacking is I'm keeping my pace nice and slow. Don't want to get sweaty. It's about 20 degrees right now. It's supposed to be getting colder throughout the day. Oh, I have arrived at a glorious camp. Kind of down here in the cedars. Down by a little creek. Wonderful, I can hear the water running up under the ice a little bit. I'm gonna hang right here between that tree and that tree. And you can see the creek goes on down that away. And it's a little bit windy in this area, but the wind is all up there. And I'm kind of down here, hidden behind these cedars a little bit, and it's really blocking a lot of the wind. So I'm going to put the tarp up first. It's lightly snowing, and uh, go from there. I hiked in about two miles. Kind of, you know, took my time walking, but you still get a little sweaty. Got in, you know, I could feel a little moisture uh, inside of myself. Then I got set up, pitched the tarp, put the hammock up. Uh, kind of made my paths. Snow is not real deep, so I was shoveling some up on top of my snow stakes. You know, I kind of mixed the snow up and let them set and just hooked the tarp to it really loosely and then wait for that to firm up about 15, 20 minutes and just start tightening it a little bit at a time. And man, now I switched out to some dry insulated underwear, put on my little fleece tights, put these uh, pants back on, my, my Outdoor Research Cirque pants. Um, Switched out all my shirts, got an insulated, really nice insulated shirt, then put the orange shirt back on, then I got my orange down jacket on under here, and then my, my old Go Light jacket that's not made anymore, put that over the top. I still got my woolly, because um, tomorrow's supposed to be real cold, so I did throw in a couple of extra things. I had them in the back of the car. I always do. You know, I said, man, I better bring them because, you know, you always feel like you need to just go, ah, I won't need it. But I would rather be good and warm than not warm. So I'm right down here by this little frozen creek, and I'm right there. So that is the War Bonnet Superfly. Got my War Bonnet El Dorado hammock. War Bonnet Zero Degree Wookie Under Quilt. My top quilt is the Jacks Are Better, I think the High Sierra Sniveller, which is rated to about minus five. And that Wookie is a zero degree, and I've got an under quilt protector, just in case the wind starts to blow. I might pitch my tarp down tonight. It's snowing lightly. There's my Wookie. Got a lot of loft, still lofting up right now. The El Dorado, which is like the XLC, I just don't have the shelf. I just kind of add my mesh organizer right there. It's a disorganized organizer. Got some socks in there for tonight. Totally one of my favorite times now. Start putting my stove together. There's my fuel bottle with the pump in it. A little small MSR. I carry some extra fuel in some plastic containers. This is kind of an old stove stand I've had 15 years or so. It's, uh, it was by a company they make the candle lanterns now, UCO. I think it was called the Mighty Stove Stand, but I don't think you can find them available anymore. 
but I'm glad it holds the whole stove together. There's my old MSR Whisper Light stove, and the other parts of it are uh, this aluminum piece that folds up, and that goes below it, and it keeps the heat from, you know, keeps the heat coming up and not going down into the ground, and the windscreen. And ever since I had a pump bust on me years ago, I carry an extra pump with me in my bag right there, and that's what I do. So I take the stove and uh, put that little piece of metal. You got to put that on there before you spread the legs out on it. Spread those out. One of my favorite parts. Your hand gets a little sooty, but it's good to know your stove. I tested it at home. I know it's good to go. It kind of keeps your stove sitting a little more level, all right, like that. And then there's two pieces of elastic right there, and that's where my fuel pump will go in. And then my stove is kind of all together in one piece like that. So when I set it on the ground, you know, I'm going to build a little snow mound here in a second. It's pretty good to go, and then you put your windscreen over it, and you get to cooking. One tool for winter, carrying out a shovel. It's a little collapsible. It weighs about, I think it's about 18 ounces, so it's just a little bit over a pound. It's invaluable out here in the snow, digging things out, setting those snow stakes in the ground. And right now, I just made myself a little, little flat spot here that I'll put my stove on. And that's gonna be my little, little working place. That's your BCA Traverse Snow Shovel. What it does is it keeps your hands when you use those little plastic shovels that you got to get your hands wet all the time, your gloves will get wet. The more they touch the snow, the wetter they get. And I do a lot of maintenance to keep those things dry, man, and really baby those gloves. I have myself a piping hot apple cider. I got my lunch out. That is just some nice Genoa salami right there. It's nice and fatty and oily, and it doesn't freeze up and get all hard. I got... Uh, some sausage for the morning, pre-cooked, pre-cooked at home, which is the beauty of uh, winter camping. Your food's not going to spoil. I got some cut up garlic beef sticks here that I'm going to have right now. And I have a few pieces of pre-cooked bacon for my breakfast, but I'm going to have a little nosh here and I'll uh, sit here and stare at the woods. It's quiet out here other than when I start talking. It just sounds so loud. I should, I should talk like this and it won't sound so loud. I can just still hear the wind blowing up in the tops of the trees a little. And it's funny, the trees down here are cracking and popping a lot. I mean, it's only about 20 degrees, maybe 19, and that's unusual. But I, I think it's the wind is blowing the top of these trees because it's kind of blowing way up over the top of me. And I just get these little series, it all happens a lot. And uh, on top of that, I heard some coyotes or some kind of wild beast howling way off through the woods a little while ago. Hope they're not hungry. So now I got both of those containers full of nice hot water. Well, the one inside the Reflectix is about half full now because I know I'm a little bit dehydrated because, you know, here in winter, it, it, you work so hard to, to keep your water from freezing that you never end up drinking enough because when you're doing it, you keep some hot water thinking you need some for later. So I'm just drinking myself a mug of just, it's not boiling, it's very hot. Then I melted some snow. I go scoop the cleanest snow I can, and I went out on the creek out onto the ice down here, and I took the shovel and cleared the snow, and kept going out and kind of kicking it with my heel and banging it with the shovel. And now I can walk out there, I got a little place, it's not too deep, but I don't want to get my mucklucks wet, because mucklucks ain't meant to get wet. And I can scoop myself some ice cold water now. It's a little easier than gathering the snow because you get a little. I actually just use my cozy from Hillbilly Pot and I just get some snow and drop it in. And now that I've been at camp a while, there's more snow clumps around and I'll pick up those clumps and drop them in. It's going to be dark out here by 410, 415. My feet are so warm. And I wore my Steger mucklucks out here this time. Just being out here by myself. I love it. You, 
the trick too is is to be confident be confident in your gear um, I do have my inReach Explorer with me which is a thing you can carry it's got an SOS feature it goes to a satellite if I get injured that's mainly why I'm carrying it on this trip um, I can text Meg I might send her a text tonight but it's this thing and I have it turned off right now but if I get in dire straits it's got an SOS button and uh, if they'll find me they'll get the message find my coordinates so I bring that for peace of mind for myself and for my family seems prudent 60 year old man out here winter you got to be careful out here one one accident if I'm out here by myself things could go south real quickly but back to just general soloing do not hike with worry be vigilant be confident but don't let worry kill your trip you know uh, I'm a spirited introvert so I think I think a lot of introverted people really like solo camping trips uh, one final thought on the mucklucks you know these sneakers I've had them since I think 2014 2013 now um, had them on a lot of trips these ones they've got the rubber sole like that and they're still holding up my feet are so nice right now just one pair of I have the expedition smart wool socks in there just one pair and all the liners and footbeds for the muckluck you don't really want to put two pairs of uh, wool socks in it's warmer with one and feet just feel great all right there's my snow stake and what I do is I have a line right in the middle and I like to use uh, an S banner and what happens is this stake I bury it in the snow it's underneath you can see where it goes down under there this snow is really loose so I put that stake in there sideways like that throw that snow on there pack it down I wait a while I attach the tarp to it but really loose my tarp line comes here off the d-ring I have a piece of shock cord I think it's eighth inch it's a little bit thicker it runs into this line lock and what I can do is I can loosen my tarp and tighten it really easy with a pull if I need to disconnect it I just undo the s banner when I take my tarp down and then I can take my shovel and dig that stake out of the snow because they get set up in there pretty good Get her. Now that's a boil. That's a crazy boil. Mm -hmm. I can't even begin to say how glorious it is out here. That wind is not hitting me, but if I go up the hill, I feel it. Do you wish you were here? No, you don't. Is it that you don't like winter camping? Oh, yeah. You don't want to camp with me. Well, I guess I'll get over that. Woo, buddy. It's 4 o'clock, and it's getting dark. And it's going to be dark by 4.30. I still got to kill some time till dinner. Oh, I want to crawl in and go to sleep so badly right now. I laid there for about 20 minutes, just kind of laying back with my feet on the ground. And I almost fell asleep, and I made myself get up. It takes a while to get used to getting dark at 4.30. A Rolo Coco, and it is fantastico. Getting ready to have my chicken and dumplings. They're sitting in the pot. Time to uh, add a little bit more fuel to my fuel bottle and be ready for the morning because I will be in that hammock and hopefully sleeping within an hour. Woo, buddy! And tonight's chocolate after dinner is the Wunderbar. Oh, yes. We got snow. Yes, we do. Little dusty snow starting to fall and gather and it's just light. Just enough to be cool man it's just gonna clean everything up I'll just hear it hitting the tarp <laughs>
Got it all pitched down for the night now. Ready to go in there. Oh yeah. I think that's going to be good. It is 7.45. Shug of the third person slept 13 hours. It is 8 degrees. It got down to 6. It was windy. My medallia d'oro is on. The peanut butter pop tarts are slightly heating up on top. The fancy feast is doing its job. Man, it was a weird night. I mean, the trees around here, I've never heard them popping. Usually it's like 20 below. And man, they were just uh, snapping and popping all night long. And I love it right here. I love being by this little creek. Oh, and I could hear that, that water running under the ice all night. And uh, I swear it sounded like voices. I kept waking up going, man, is there somebody walking around out there? Slept good and warm. I got to say, this Wookiee under quilt. The one thing I'm going to say about that quilt, and I've said it before, is when you get in and lay in your hammock at night, there's no waiting to warm up. It's, it's instantly warm on my butt and back, more so than any other underquilt I have. There, I said it. Okay. And I think it's because of the way it, um, it sort of hangs like a hammock, as opposed to using a lot of uh, elastic or shock cord, I would call it. I guess they're both the same. But shock cord's cooler. Elastic's kind of, uh, that holds up your panties. Uh, shock cord holds up your underquilt. And I think just the way it hooks up, it... Um, just functions really well and a lot of people worry about your outside shoulder not cold at all so don't worry about it it's fine I got myself a ball yes sir the psychological thrill of the first sip of hot espresso I'm excited because they're chocolate peanut butter covered tap tarts What a combo out in the woods. Just to be clear, I never eat Pop-Tarts at home. I only eat them backpacking. Repeat, never at home. I made some pancakes at home with butter and syrup, and I got them in a baggie. And uh, they look kind of gross right there right now. Big chunks of butter, syrup, and I'm going to put them in my pot of boiling water and heat them up and see if that is satisfying. Kind of got the wind of whipping through the holler this morning, but my, uh, my pancakes and sausage, I heated them up twice there, had it sitting to the side and brought the water to the boil again, and man, that is the ticket. Second cup of Medaglia d'Oro. All I did was make pancakes. I buttered them, I syruped them, I cut some sausage up in them, and man, they're ugly, but they're great. Fantastic! Goodness gracious, that's some good eating. Woo, buddy. Now, here's one thing with this shovel. This little orange end is plastic, but the rest of it's aluminum, just like my saw and just like my cook pots. And when you're out at a certain temperature, and right now it's, I don't know, it's like 8 degrees, and I got these fingers out, fingers on cold aluminum is not a good thing. So a good thing is I put on my little second layer of gloves, my minus 30 gloves are called, and now when I grab that shovel, things are good and my hands are fine all right there's my thermometer I got that hanging on a tree I sleep with it at night it's an old Springfield I'm not even sure they make them anymore the bottom temperature is the outside temperature the top is the inside so that's the receiver and then the transmitter the little second part I keep it hanging right out here in my snake skin all right, so that's my tarp mesh one piece skin from hammock gear and uh, it just hangs there so it's getting the outside temperature and that one will go down to minus 40. 
and so will my one from Accurite. And then once it hits minus 40, it goes to LL, which means lower limit. It's not going to record any lower than that, even though it will be colder outside. Bub Dusirati saw. It's a great saw. It just, it's kind of a cam lock saw. Just sort of puts together like that. Blade comes off at the end. Stores inside the handle. But when you put it together, you clip one end in to the saw like that. You take the other end and you put it on the handle like that and then just kind of pull it up lock it in all yeah, right it's about 12 45 10 degrees got myself a pretty nice little uh, pile of wood back there i've been sawing and sawing and sawing warm me up i even actually got a little bit sweaty got myself a nice pile of pretty much cedar right there and i'll build my fire right on those two pieces and i will sit right there and have my dinner and then I'll be dispersing all that because up where the actual fire pit is there's a strong wind blowing and I don't want to dig it out and I don't want to sit in that wind and I just want a little small heat fire and to heat my chicken up you really got to be um, kind of vigilant and diligent about something gets kind of damp and wet start drying it out before it gets soaked put it up against your body so <clears throat> your, your body heat will dry it out really good the closest pocket to your skin and uh, get it out in the sun and when I build a fire tonight I'll do a final check before uh, I crawl into the hammock and make sure everything's good and dry and I can dry it out with the fire and you got to stay ahead of the game on that so if you're winter camping you know, and I'm out here in 10 degrees, and it's supposed to get, I think, minus 4. That's what they were saying. We'll wait and see, because you never know. Uh, you got to kind of be really vigilant, because one mistake leads to another mistake. And when you're three mistakes in, it starts to get a little bit scary. Here's my water source. I'm stepping over here to dip my water out of there, and it keeps freezing up. Fixing to have me some out of hoeing. Fully loaded buttery delicious potatoes and I will add some pre-cooked bacon from home that's some Nooski's bacon which is mine Meg's favorite that's always good bacon and then a bunch of more butter in there and then some pepper and that's gonna be a little early lunch early and a hot steaming apple cider Man, I've been eating on this thing for five minutes. I still got a lot left. That there is a huge pot of potatoes. Bunch of butter, that bacon, it's so good. I'm gonna keep eating it while it's hot. I have a nice lime chicken thigh that Meg cooked at home with some saffron rice with uh, pineapple in it. And I scooped a little bit of that up in the morning when I was getting up at three o'clock to get here, or 2.55 and wrapped it up in foil and i'm going to heat that by the fire tonight because it's frozen and that will be a good dinner i am enjoying today so much watching these two red squirrels come by once in a while a couple of snow hares hop by just been doing chores all day long i mean it's there's a lot of chores in winter camping that's for sure and looking forward to getting that wood burning a little later and have a nice little heat fire get warmed up there's the gloves that I kind of had tucked down into my pants, and they're pretty dry now. But I'm just going to put them in the sun. Here, that's my little drying station for a minute. Take advantage of that, that sun while it's there. It's about 8 degrees now. The sun is going down. I don't know why I'm talking like this. We've been watching The Good Doctor, Meg and I. I'm Dr. Sean Murphy. I'm a surgical resident. I like winter camping. So if I uh, have some wind tonight, it's going to be coming from behind you. Turn around and look. It's real pretty. Isn't it? A little creek. Don't step in the creek. 
And uh, those little final camp chores, I love them winter camping because that's kind of what warms you up. You know, sort of taking off the little last layer of clothes, making sure everything's set, brushing your teeth, making sure your water's done. Uh, get that tarp pitched down, get everything in, go get the food hung up for the night. Yes, even in the winter, I go back up in the trees there and I hang everything. Like this morning when I got up, when I wanted to have my Medaglia d'Oro Instant Espresso. I had to get up and go out and go get the food bag, then I dropped it off, then I brought the tarp up. And uh, that way I could lay there and have coffee and just kind of look at the woods rather than look at the inside of a tarp. Dark enough. Woo, buddy! Now one thing, when I do have a fire, I'm either really careful wearing my down, but the best thing, just to put on the woolly. So man, I'm sitting here and it's about a quarter to six. It is dark and I got a great fire going and I'm so happy and I just had a Rolo Coco and the stars are out. I don't see a moon yet, but it is minus two degrees right now and I am toasty warm and happy as can be. Minus four. Woo, hello everybody. Good long night sleep. Comfy and warm. And uh, I might have gone to sleep about 9.30 last night. It is about 7.40 right now. You know, it doesn't uh, get light till about 7.30. That gloomy light, I just didn't want to be up in this cold. Got the Medaglia d'Oro Instant Espresso going. I'm going to finish up this, uh, this Uper bar. From Jeremy, who sent me a little uh, swag pack. This is from the uh, UP in Michigan, and that is Seke Seklis. Seklis. It's a candy bar. I ate some of it last night. Really good, dark chocolate. And the temperature right now is two degrees. I just took it out of my pocket, and it got down to minus seven. Got down to minus seven. That was the low. So, not bad. I, I gotta think the perfect spot is about 10 degrees to about minus 10. You know, I mean, as far as like getting out and doing some winter snow camping and feeling like you really did something. Cold enough to be sort of critical, and but not like minus 20 or minus 25. So, minus 7 is a good, real nice... I'll take that. I'll take that. Well, I'm gonna drink that coffee, and I'm going to then maybe have a second one got just enough alcohol fuel to have one more or go over and start the pump get some hot water break down camp that's going to take a little bit disperse my fire it burned out pretty well through the night but i'll take all the ashy wood and disperse it out through the woods and uh, shovel some snow over it clean it up and you'll never know it was there well most of my most of my breath frost went on to my frost bib here both sides and uh, I put that hole around my neck and then when I'm laying back sleeping I got that like that and that's catching most of my breath and keeping it off my top quilt I have very little on my top quilt right here you can see there's not I mean maybe just a touch but not a lot I hate just having all that ice all over the top of my top quilt there and I did do a video on this frost bib once I do consider myself pretty lucky because I get to sit on a very cold fiberglass pooper and uh, people always ask about pooping in the woods no trick you just go you just don't linger and because I got a pooper up here on the Superior hiking trail it saves a lot of work Normally I go out and shovel a place. I'd go out in the woods way out there somewhere thick. I'd do my business, 
after I'm done cleaning up, I take my wet wipe and put it back into the pack and I put it in a baggie because I don't want to leave the wet wipes because they don't burn. And I burn my paper and then I just throw the snow back over it and that's why I make sure it's easier in the snow to go back in the woods where nobody would probably walk in the summer. So just burn your paper, don't leave your wet wipes. Just leave the poo, the animals do, it'll break down, but just don't leave it in the middle of somewhere where people are walking. Uh, the body is working, it's charged up right now, and uh, once I drop trowel, it's kind of pleasant sitting there. I don't linger that long, but uh, I'll sit and enjoy the moment. So there's where I had my fire right there. So you can't even tell I had one. I dispersed all the burn, there wasn't much left, but I threw the pieces all through the woods back there. You'll never see them, covered the ground. All that wood I put on the bottom, that was really not even hardly burned. I mean, it was a little ashy in the middle. And uh, I think come spring, no one will ever know. No one will ever know. Sometimes winter camping, you gotta do what you gotta do. But I did not build a fire ring, which is what the rules on the Superior Hiking Trail say. Is do not create new fire rings, which I did not. There is no ring there. So shig's all good, but I tell you, up on the hill, that was super windy. Down here in the holler, I had a good break from the wind. Feeling good, getting ready to go. There's my trash bag right there. Always a good thing to take your trash and tote it out. Don't be one of the people who leaves your trash out there for people to see. That ain't a good gift. That's like getting coal in your Christmas stocking. Melting snow this morning because my water hole. I couldn't bust that ice in that water hole. I'm heading out. I uh, got maybe two miles to go. I got everything, left a clean camp. It's about nine degrees, and I'm really happy and glad that I came out here. It was a great couple of nights. I thoroughly enjoyed it. No problem with my shoulder. You know, it's still a little stiff, but it doesn't hurt. And I know a lot of you like to ask about if I weigh my pack. Well, I don't. It's winter. It's just not a time to really, uh, you know, it's just not lightweight time. I carry what I carry. Uh, that's why later when the snow gets deeper, I'll go to a pulk. I can carry a little more, a little more bulk, a little more fuel, a couple of more tools to get out here and make a fire. Making a fire was just great. Really glad I did that. A lot of people think I never have fires. I have one I want to. I got fire skills. I grew up doing it. I'm just lazy. Woo, buddy! Well, it's a cure in Sector 7. And if you wonder where Sector 7 is, it's 200 yards around me, so it's a pretty big area. Sector 7. Secure your sector. Don't let the sappers invade. Shug's doing a snow low. <laughs> 